Welcome to the special edition of ACTV Newsmakers. Recently, the DuPage County Board and the DuPage County Health Department announced collaboration on a new initiative that is focused on mental health and substance abuse care uh, and treatment within DuPage County. We're going to talk to two of the subject experts on this new initiative. Joining us today from the DuPage County Board is County Board Chair Deborah Conroy and Adam Forker, the um, Executive Director of the DuPage County Health Department. So to Chair Conroy and Mr. Forker, thank you very much for coming in, talking with our viewers here in Addison today. This is called the DuPage Council on Strengthening the System for Mental Health and Substance Use Care. If it's okay with you folks, we'll just call it the council uh, I, going forward. Is absolutely. that okay? All right. Absolutely. So, uh, Chair Conroy, let's start off with you. Can you describe some of the uh, accessibility of services that existed here in DuPage County before the council was established recently, uh, both in the area of mental health and substance abuse, as you were able to see them? So, I would say DuPage does it better than just about anywhere else. Um, you know that we have the services currently. Um, I would say the, the health department does a wonderful job of having somewhere to call and somewhere to for someone to go to. The problem is the need is so vast. We have so many people with so much need that it's just we don't have the bandwidth. To, to care for it. You know, the ER is not the place for people to go. Um, we particularly have a crisis in terms of, of children, of youth, not having anywhere to go. So I would say those are our biggest um, challenges is that the need is so much larger than what we're able to handle at this time. And on top of that, it's people being aware that the resources are there. So I think that, you know, that this commission is going to be able to get the information out there and hopefully create a continuum of care so that all of our, our residents know what to do when they're in a situation where they need help. Now you've been in office about a year now as county board mm -hmm. chair, and I'm sure in that year's time, you've heard a number of stories, probably some very personal one-on-one mm -hmm. uh, -on -one stories because we are talking about how people have to navigate life sometimes right. and it does not go exactly the way that maybe we thought it was going to go. So people have a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, any particular stories maybe that stood out or things that maybe motivated you and the health department to work collaborative on bringing this together, especially when it came to the area of accessibility to uh, a, a care, a substance abuse, mental health care in DuPage County? Well, Don, it started long before I became county board chair for me. I worked for 10 years in the General Assembly and my focus was mental health and addiction. Um, the stories that I've heard would, would break your heart and I'm sure you've heard many yourself. Um, the ones that, that really get me the most are the families. I've raised four sons, they're adults, very proud of them. Um, but there have been moments with my kids and with friends and their kids where you're not sure if your kids are okay and you don't know what to do. You don't know who to call. We don't want that to continue. We have a crisis, especially after COVID. Um, it's brought it even kind of more to the forefront. I don't think anybody went through COVID who doesn't tangibly understand what their mental health is and the struggles that we can have. Um, the, the truth is it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to not be able to get the resources that you need. And one of the bigger challenges that we have is that we have very few um, places that take Medicaid. Our health department takes Medicaid, thankfully. Our new um, crisis uh, intervention center will take Medicaid. So no one will any longer have to sit home and say, I don't have insurance, we'll take you know, we'll be able to um, take care of folks no matter what situation that they're in. Um, so I would say the children, number one, and then one story that I never forget is, is a, someone I've become very good friends with who said to me once, you know, she was in the ER. And she said, if I don't tell them I'm going to kill myself, they're not going to help me. She said, I'm going to be sent home. She said, and I keep telling them, I'll be back. I'm going to be back. We want to stop that. We want to make sure people get the care that they need. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, on the council, uh, you've appointed a number of stakeholders, some very important people uh, in DuPage County and beyond, mm -hmm. who will really bring a lot to the table. I know you have a number of representatives from the legislature mm -hmm. uh, and uh, county officials uh, as well. But it's interesting because it looks as though you've also focused on uh, subject experts, which of course would be very important. And then you have found people who have what we might call a lived experience, mm -hmm. almost similar to a couple of those uh, uh, stories that you were you mm -hmm. were sharing with us just a moment ago. So, why have that level 
of a cross section of representatives of DuPage County. You've got legislative county, but you also have our practitioners and you have folks who, as I said, have lived this before. What, what do you hope to bring by having that cross section on the council? Well, one thing that I learned as a legislator is that nobody can do anything alone. And the more people that we can put together with the most amount of life experience, professional experience, that's how we fix things. That's how we do things. Um, so that's why we bring people together. There could be legislative fixes that we need. So we already have legislators at the table. They already understand those mm -hmm. needs. You know, we had our uh, fire chief the other day was saying, why don't we put 988 on the side of fire trucks and police trucks? That was a fantastic idea. People don't know about 988. We need and to get that information And talk about that for a moment, if you would. 988, 988 national hotline, is right? a national hotline mm -hmm. that started a little over a year ago. Um, it's not very well known at this at this time. We need to get the information out more. But one of the reasons it's not is because we don't have anywhere to send people. And in DuPage County, we're going to fix that so that there is somewhere to send people. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, uh, initiatives like this cost money. Mm -hmm. And in uh, 2023, late 2023, the county board uh, made an appropriation of $250,000, my understanding, mm -hmm. um, as sort of the, the first uh, appropriation to the council. Uh, what do you hope to fund with that? Because obviously you had to get the county board to approve something mm -hmm. like that. But additionally, do you see this as an ongoing appropriation at the county government level? I think it's going to be a priority for our county board going forward. This is something that we need to continue to focus on. Um, we had what was called the HOPE Task Force previously, mm -hmm. and they focused on opioids, which was their work and the foundation that they they put down was, was invaluable to the work we're going to do going forwards. But it just makes sense the um, you know the dual diagnosis between mental health and addiction that um, you know that we we address them both together. They kind of walk together. They don't walk they? hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, horse and cart. Um, yep. So we need to make sure that we're addressing both, and it's going to continue to be a priority for our board. I would say that's a, a bipartisan. You know, I was privileged in the House of Representatives to chair the Mental Health and Addiction Committee, and I was always so proud of the fact that we did everything bipartisanly because mental health and addiction doesn't care. Right. For sure, it doesn't. Um, in addition, one of the key goals of the new council would be to focus on education. Mm -hmm. it's, it's service delivery, it's uh, prevention, but it's also education as well. Mm -hmm. uh, anything particular that you would like to see going forward? I know the council has already, you've had your, your meeting, uh, you've brought your stakeholders together. Anything specific that maybe you have an idea or something you wanna make sure stays on their agenda when it comes to education? And it's not, it doesn't have to necessarily be at a particular age level or grade level, what it, it could be countywide. It could be you know touching mm -hmm. every citizen of DuPage County. So any it, particular? I ideas? think the most important thing is you know we continue to struggle somewhat with stigma, and I think in terms of education, everybody needs to understand it's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to need some time. It's okay to reach out for help. Um, we should expect that. Our kids should expect when they're growing up that they're going to have struggles. You know, if you have a stomach ache, you might need to take, you know, Pepto-Bismol. Mm -hmm. If you have an appendicitis, you're going to need some more support. And our kids need to understand that they're going to grow up. Anxiety is going to be part mm -hmm. of life. And how you deal with it are the tools that, you know, we can help to give our kids and also give them the tool to understand it's okay to not be okay. Well, as I mentioned, this is a collaborative between DuPage County government and the DuPage County Health Department, mm -hmm. two agencies that you would assume work together on a lot of things, and they do. And Adam Forker, who is the executive director of the DuPage County Health Department, uh, joins Chair Conroy uh, in our discussion today. Adam, now taking this from the health department standpoint, you folks are the service delivery people. You're the ones, you know, as I say, the people kind of out in the field getting the work done. How will service delivery uh, change, be modified, the ability for people to reach out as Chair Conroy has, has illustrated the need. Now it's going to be kind of focusing on some of the facilities and the tools that you have at the DuPage Health Department to, to get service delivery out. So yeah. what are some of the thoughts that you think are starting now that the council will be able to work on? Yeah, I think what's really exciting is the council will be able to support all of this work, strengthening the system across the continuum of care for the entire county, both indirectly and directly. And what I mean is indirectly, we're bringing together all these experts that will be able to really help truly identify the gaps and figure out the plan to fix those gaps and improve access to care. That can be through policy work, legislative advocacy, designing programs and initiatives, all of that kind of stuff, and we will do that. Um, 
directly is this council is being assembled gratefully at a time that is consistent with the work we're doing to build this new facility, the Crisis Recovery Center. And I think the council can work hand in glove with our development to make sure that that center is developed with all of these expert point of views in mind. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that connection and collaboration will really make sure that we're truly uh, addressing the gaps for everybody in a meaningful way. And a lot of that started previously when you opened up the uh, Leonard Kozawa Center, correct? Isn't, wasn't that kind of your first Absolutely. brick and mortar uh, approach to, to bringing uh, awareness of um, uh, mental health and, and crisis addressing that in DuPage County. Absolutely, and, and I appreciate that question because it's both sort of a, a nod and an acknowledgement to all the great service we've been able to deliver at that facility and recognition that we still need more. Um, as, as Chair Conroy mentioned, the demand is only growing and uh, importantly, we really need a space for youth and the current facility doesn't offer as much services for youth as we know we need. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you cannot really blend those two constituencies together. You wanna have adults with their own space and youth have far greater needs and they obviously are gonna need their physical Absolutely. space as well. Um, it was mentioned earlier, so let's go back and touch on it again. A lot of this has come up as a result of post pandemic or in the pandemic realization that mental health was really important. So did a lot of this need and the, the increased need grow as a result of the pandemic and where we are today now? Maybe things weren't being addressed that now they really do have to be looked at in DuPage County? Yeah, I think that, you know, for us at the health department, uh, treating mental health and substance use disorder as a priority is actually not new. We've been delivering these services to our community since the 1960s. Uh, we'd also been observing I think an upward trend in some of these challenges, even in the years leading up to the pandemic. Lots of challenges with social media and technology and isolation and youth, and that was kind of on an upward trajectory leading into the pandemic. The pandemic certainly didn't help anything and has exacerbated those issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, again, we sort of have seen this as a priority for a long time, and, and, and now is the opportunity to take advantage of um, the energy around this. So where are we at today when it comes to awareness? of mental health and substance abuse issues. Um, though there have been many strides taken over the last few decades, Chair Conroy, when she was in the legislature, talked about mm -hmm. working on this, certainly on a bipartisan matter. However, there are still stigmas and concerns that maybe rest and a lot of people maybe aren't reaching out, those who, who could be. So kind of compare and contrast where we're at today uh, versus maybe where we were 10, 20, 30 sure. years ago in service delivery, but also people being aware that, hey, I think I do need to reach out for help from your standpoint. Yeah, from my perspective, it's two things can be true at once. We have made some progress with reducing stigma. There is more willingness to discuss these issues openly and candidly. I think more compassion has entered into these discussions culturally. And yet, I also think we still have far too many community members, individuals and families alike that are feeling isolated and are suffering needlessly. And so I think that while this moment is here and we're seeing some progress with the willingness and ability to talk about these things, I do think, as Chair Conroy mentioned, there's still not enough of us that recognize it's okay to not be okay and that help is available. And so. that would be the type of direction that the council would be taking, is finding these issues and starting to, to address them as well. Um, what are some of the deliverables then, would you say, that are gonna come out of the council and ultimately probably be available at the health department. You talked a little bit about uh, building the new center mm -hmm. and, and yep. getting that up and running, getting it staffed and also having it programmed appropriately and age specific and so on. But deliverables, um, we have a hotline now. We talked, the chair talked about a national hotline. Uh, the 211 hotline now has been on, on board for over a year. Um, are those going to be the types of services you think going forward that the council can steer and, and put in place and then you at the health department would be actually be able to get that running countywide? Yeah, I think that that's correct. I, I look at the deliverables of the council. I think there is the, the need to collectively identify the gaps, assess the needs and the disparities within our community. I think there is a need to push an increase for the awareness of the services already available, but to increase the awareness for the need for more services. I think there's gonna be a push to help end stigma. And I think that there is ultimately this work to strengthen the system and, and do the things that you're talking about that we're seeing 
who is accessing, how many people are accessing, and we're monitoring the progress of that access to care through those types of things that you just described. And we'll, we'll measure, you know, we'll measure our progress and we'll evolve as the needs of our community evolves. Mm. Are those generally the type of uh, uh, access to resources that we have right now in DuPage County? Uh, and maybe folks don't really know what, what is available through the health department facilities right now. Maybe just take a yeah. step back and, you know, let, let's take a look at the menu of, of uh, opportunities that folks have available. How do they access? Uh, assistance for these types of situations? Yeah, I love that question. Um, we've been talking mostly about um, behavioral health crisis needs, and that certainly 988 is the, the access point. You know, don't waste any time, call 988 if you're mm -hmm. experiencing a behavioral health crisis. Uh, but we do have additional services for mental health and substance use support for individuals, uh, adolescents and adults, sort of across the spectrum of services. So outpatient, case management, counseling, family therapy, care coordination, medication-assisted treatment. Uh, the health department has providers across that array of services, and that's available to any resident uh, that needs it. And so, you know, you can just call our main phone number, 630-682-7400, and say you're looking for, you know, any of those services, and we'll have an intake specialist walk you through that process. Well, thank you, Adam. And let me ask, in, in closing, Chair Conner, I'll start off with you. What's the takeaway from all of this? This council has recently been established. Uh, as I said, you, you've, you've launched your meetings right now. We've talked about some pretty critical things that in the past people probably, gee, I didn't know this type of service was available and they or their loved one would be able to access it. So what would be something you wanna make sure that our viewers are listening to today and being empowered by, by the work that you've been doing at the county level with this new council? Well, I think, you know, something I've been saying for a long time is that it's so important to talk about it. You know, when you ask somebody how they are, mean it and listen for the answer. It's important because it is okay to not be okay. And if we don't get that message out, that's how we break stigma. We tell our stories and we listen to other people's stories. And I believe the people that we brought together in this group will not only carry that message, but they'll bring it to their own communities and help to spread it that way. And, and I believe that in DuPage, we're going to create the continuum of care that is so desperately needed. And when, this, um, when our, our crisis center is opened, it will be the first in the country and it will help our children. And that's that's a message that I think we can't get out enough. Our kids need support and they just don't have it. Very good. Adam, same question to you. Where do you think going forward, residents of DuPage County need to get this information, um, understand it, know that there are services available, uh, and as, as we kind of said, breaking down barriers that maybe are in the way that don't have to be in the way. Where would you see people? taking an empowerment moving forward on that. Yeah, I think that, you know, my interest, I sort of call to action for, for our community members, for me is really for any community member to know that if, if, if they or a family member are experiencing a behavioral health crisis, to know that they're not alone, that it's very common and that help is available. And so I really would, I, I think I can't stress enough that 988 is here to call or text I know that that might be important for the youth, that you can text 988 and you can get that help. I think the other thing for me is for community members to get involved. Um, we need far more behavioral health professionals and mental health workers than we have in the field right now. Okay. It would be great for young people to get into that profession in that field. Um, and I think that anybody, any, any resident of any age, could also let their representatives and elected officials know that uh, this is an important issue for them and their family. And so those would be the kind of the, the big takeaways I'd hope for, for some of your viewers. It sounds like a great start to an initiative that has already been in place in DuPage County and we are really raising it up even higher because of the need uh, within our communities and making sure that residents are aware that services are available, okay not to be okay, Chair Conroy, as you mentioned, and knowing that going forward through the offerings of the DuPage County Health Department, you have services that are available. So I really pre do appreciate both of you for being here today and, and talking with our viewers here on ACTV about this. Joining us today from the DuPage County Board is County Board Chair Deborah Conroy and Adam Forker, Executive Director of the DuPage County Health Department. And to get more information and follow the work of the DuPage Council on strengthening the system for mental health and substance use care, visit dupagecounty.gov. Thank you for joining us on ACTV Newsmaker.